Isolation acoustics versus internal room acoustics. This is one of my favorite subjects. This is the moment where I now ask you to throw away the word soundproofing. Do not use that word anymore. If someone comes to me and says, I want some soundproofing, I know I'm talking to an amateur. Might be a good financial moment, but it's not a very good acoustic moment. Soundproofing doesn't mean anything. Two big subjects to be aware of. Are we talking about isolation acoustics or are we talking about internal room acoustics? Are we discussing, talking about, learning, solving, designing for anything that has to do with keeping our rooms quiet or making sure that we are not disturbed by neighbors or we bother neighbors? Basically, recording studios are quiet. All of that is isolation acoustics. Not to be confused with internal room acoustics. How does sound behave in a room? We make some noise or sound. So we propagate sound in a studio and then we receive it. So we have a sending transducer, a receiving transducer, usually your mouth or an instrument. And the receiving transducers are of course, microphones and ears in recording their microphones. How does our environment affect that? So we can have an extremely quiet room that sounds horrible, like for instance, the Lincoln Tunnel in New York, if there are no cars in it, it's extremely quiet. There's absolutely no noise, but it sounds a little bit strange. Or we can have a room that sounds amazing, but you hear the garbage truck every time it goes by the window. We need both. The money is in the isolation, or it can be in the isolation acoustics. The glory and the fun is in the internal room acoustics. So this is the moment where we need to really make sure we understand the difference between the two. Historically and traditionally, I like to discuss the isolation acoustics first because it is potentially the most expensive and nightmarish subject. And we need to get it out of the way. There's no glory in isolation acoustics. You basically get points off if you do it wrong and get no credit if you do it right. Also, it's very hard to change isolation acoustics after you've constructed your studio. And that's really the, the key point. But there's a little bit of a silver lining in isolation acoustics because we can often solve for quietness with social solutions. For instance, one way to quiet air conditioning is to simply turn it off. I know that sounds a little silly, but that may be the exact solution you need for your budget studio or a project studio. You don't need super quiet studios for 90% of your work. You only need it when you're recording. That's okay, you record for five minutes at a time just turn the air conditioning off. May not be an acceptable solution here at Berkeley, but it might be an extremely acceptable solution in your studio. So we're gonna be reviewing lots of those kinds of effects, but it all starts with understanding the goals you're trying to acquire. And for the most part, many of the surface treatments and the geometry of the rooms have purpose. We're in an environment where for the most part, form does follow function. It's an old axiom in architecture, first stated by Louis Sullivan, really one of the godfathers of American architecture. Louis Sullivan is where Frank Lloyd Wright worked uh, as a young man. And um, so we're very thankful to Louis Sullivan. He did all his work in Chicago and came up with that, um, with that axiom, which has been barred by a lot of people. So isolation acoustics, internal room acoustics. Make sure we understand which universe we're in. Isolation acoustics, we touch subjects like noise criteria, how quiet should a room be, TL, transmission loss, how do we isolate between boundaries, floors, walls, and ceilings, STC, which is sound transmission class, which is really the sum of a lot of TL values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, internal room acoustics, we start looking at things like reverb time, decay rate, initial time delay gap, et cetera, et cetera. Very exciting subject. Um, it's at the heart and soul of, of all acoustic knowledge. Most of you have, have touched on a lot of these subjects again. We're gonna review them and we're also gonna sharpen our pencil on these subjects and also always keeping an eye as to how they pertain to our production studios, which are for the most part, relatively small rooms. All right, so roll up your sleeves on this one, have fun. Mm -hmm.